hey, Kat, back yet again, yet again, for the fourth time, to talk about animation. Um, in the last little episode, we talked about making the ball stop when you hit it. And then I mentioned that maybe you could use what you'd learnt to go on and make Pong. So I thought, yeah, let's give it a crack. I will help you out with making a basic single player Pong. So getting the ball bouncing off a paddle, sorry, a paddle. Um, but it's up to you to implement the second half of that. So I'll implement the left side and you can implement the right side. Uh, and then also you could implement some scoring if you wanted to. So what I've done is I've copied timer two, not timer three, timer two, and I've pasted that into a new one called timer four. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create gutters on each of the sides of the board. So I'm going to declare a left gutter and a right gutter. And I'm gonna have my left gutter at my left edge plus 10. And I'm going to have my right gutter at, sorry, yeah, rect left. Um, I'm going to have my right gutter at the right side of the rectangle, minus 10, obviously, remembering where zero is. Uh, what did we call that one? We called that one rect right. We'll go with minus 10. Okay, let's draw our two gutters. We're going to just draw them as lines. I'm going to make them yet another color, just, you know, because I can. Uh, so we're going to draw a line. And we are going to draw it from the left, well, from the gutter that we created. So we called it left gutter. So a line has an X and a Y of the starting point and an X and a Y of the finishing point. So it's starting at the top of the rectangle, which we called rect top. And it is going to stay, in terms of the X position, it's going to stay at the left gutter position and it is going to finish at rect bottom. Okay, so I will copy that, I will paste that, and instead of left gutter, I'm going to have a right gutter. Copy that. Now I did say I was going to have another color, color fiend over here. Um, set color and I want something that is going to stand out a little bit so what are we going to have color dot Ooh, what can we have I might just go okay not so not so exciting I'm gonna make it blue um, okay so let's just run it and see if our two gutters appear in the appropriate place remembering that our ball is not bouncing off the gutter okay so the idea is that we're gonna have one paddle moving here you could probably use the W and the S key and we're going to have the other paddle over here using the up and down arrow keys. Okay, um, the first thing that we want to amend is we want to amend the ball to bounce off the gutters um, because at the moment that's just the easiest way that we're going to do it. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So we go to our ball bounce and this is where we actually check for the edges of our frame to do the bouncing. So instead of bouncing off the left edge, we're going to bounce off the left gutter. And instead of bouncing off the right edge, we are going to bounce off the right gutter. Now I'll tell you quickly, this is not going to work. Um, it's going to cause a funny error and it took me a little while of thinking before I could solve it. And it bounces up and down the line. And the reason for that is that the ball's starting position is between the edge of the rectangle and the gutter. So we're actually gonna try and place that somewhere closer to the center of the screen. Let's just chuck it at 50, 75, because we can, uh, and that should solve that problem. Basically, it has to be bigger than 15 as the starting point. Okay, so does the ball now bounce off our gutters? Yes, it does. So now we can start thinking about incorporating a paddle. So this one's actually going to respond to the mouse, not the mouse, the um, the keyboard. So we need to import java.awt event again. 
Uh, but instead of implementing a mouse listener, we want to implement a key listener. Okay, another error. We need some keyboard methods. So they've been popped down there. Okay, we need to register the key listener. So we're going to add key listener to this. And then the key listener was a little bit funny, so we actually need to also tell it to genuinely start listening for an event. Okay. So we're going to scroll down. And what are we going to respond to? Are we going to respond, respond to pressed or released? Ooh, tough question. Or typed. I'm actually going to use uh, pressed and released. So I'm just going to prepare those, clear them up a little bit. Again, you don't need to, it'll run just fine without this. Um, but I just like things looking a certain way. Okay, before I worry about that one, I might actually just draw that little paddle. So what kind of information do we need to store about our paddle? It's going to be a little rectangle and it's going to be traveling inside the gutter. So or what could we say? Instead of 10, we could probably actually use paddle width there. So let's go int pad width. Paddle width equals 10. Copy that into there and there. Um, int paddle height. How big do we want this paddle to be? Oh, I don't know. Maybe, well, the ball is 20. Let's maybe make our paddle 40. Okay, let's go down to, where are we, to paint, and we'll draw our paddle. I'm going to set the colour to cyan. All my students love the fact that I use multicolored pens as much as humanly possible. So just uh, just rolling with that theme here. Uh, okay, so the X and the Y, uh, where are we going to position this paddle? Um, the X is obviously going to be along the left edge of the rectangle because it's staying inside the gutter and the gutter is the same width apart from the rectangle as the paddle itself. That was a bit of a mouthful. Um, so rect left and it's Y position. We want it to start roughly halfway down the screen. Um, and you could do some maths here and I'm not good at maths in my head. So the height is 200, half of that is 100 and the paddle height is 20. So let's roll with 80. And if I calculated that wrong, then I'm really, really sorry. Um, and the width is the paddle width. And the height is the paddle height. So let's try and spell things correctly for a start. Okay, let's run that and see if my paddle is actually drawn. Okay, fantastic. So my paddle is drawn where I want it to be drawn. Uh, it's not moving yet because I haven't incorporated that. Okay, so we're going to respond to pressed and maybe also released. What we're going to type in here is we're going to say if e dot get key code is equal to e dot vk underscore w. Remember w is behaving as our up. So if that's what it is, we want to go up. So we want to decrease the paddle's y position. Uh, and I realized stupidly that we put that in as a static value. So we actually want to replace that with paddle underscore y. So we need to declare a paddle underscore y. Equals 80. So what we want to do, if they've pressed, that one doesn't look right to me. Just quickly, where are we going, keyboard. 
Oh no, should be okay. Um, so if that's true, we want the paddle to go up, but we don't want it to go past the point of the rectangle. So we first of all ask if increasing its value, so if player y plus let's say 5 is less than or equal to the top of the rectangle, we want to move up. Player, what am I talking about? Paddle, paddle. And going up is minus. Don't know where my head is at. So if we haven't hit the top yet and they press W, we want them to go up. So set the paddle Y to paddle Y minus 5. Okay. Sorry, it took me like a million attempts to try and say that. Okay. So we'll copy that. And we want to do the same for if they pressed down. Sorry, copy that whole thing. Instead of testing against W, we're testing against S and we're testing for the bottom. But we've also got to factor in the size of the paddle. So plus, sorry, minus paddle underscore height. And so we want to Think about increasing this one and then we want to repaint. So lack of explanation there. If they pressed up, which we've assigned to the key W, we want to decrease the Y value of the paddle because Y is smaller numbers are up higher. So we want to test against the top. We want the paddle to stop at the top. So we want to say if incrementing its value is going to push us past the top, don't do it. But if it's not, then we will do it, and we're going to decrease by 5. Then we say if they press S, which is our down key, we want to move the paddle. If, if going down by 5 is not going to go past the bottom of the rectangle, then we do want to do it. And what we... Oh, we'll just run that quickly and see if our paddle moves, which it doesn't. Oh, no, it does. Sorry, it's really slow. Sometimes I find with the key listener, you've got to actually just tap on the screen a few times first. Okay, so S moves, but W doesn't. So let's go have a look at that. Ah, because we've got a test for greater than or equal to. Silly, silly beaver over here. Okay, let's run that. Let's see if it works this time. So click on the screen sometimes to make sure it's working. W is going up. And S is going down. Granted, not very fast, but it is. So I'm moving it five pixels at a time, and I'm actually a little bit lazy. I did it five pixels at a time, so it would actually hit a perfect edge there. Um, let's see if increasing the speed will work by copying that into key released. Fingers crossed. So it should basically move 10 each time, once for the press and once for the release. There we go, moving a wee bit faster. Um, now you can't hold the key though, you must continue tapping the key. Okay. The next thing that we're going to look at, so I think we're done with key released and key pressed. What we want to look at, and we're done with paint actually as well. What we're going to start looking at in here is we're going to be playing with the left and the right gutter. Obviously, we're only going to be doing the left one. And instead of writing this statement, we are going to be checking if it hits the paddle itself as opposed to the gutter. So if it hits the gutter where the paddle isn't, we want it to stop. But if we hit the gutter where the paddle is, we want it to bounce. So let's have a little bit of a think about that logic and how we can write that. So first up, let's just picture our applet and the gutter. And the first thing that you would check is if your ball has actually hit the edge of the gutter. Then you want to find out where the paddle is. Right, so there's our paddle. It has a top and a bottom. So this is the paddle Y. 
and this is pad Y plus height. Then we've got our ball. And we want to test if our ball has hit the paddle. And a mistake that I keep on making is I keep testing for the top of the ball and the top of the paddle and the bottom of the ball and the bottom of the paddle. But that means that if you've got the paddle here and the ball bounces on the edge of the paddle, it doesn't count. So you actually want to test for the middle of the ball to the bottom of the paddle and the middle of the ball to the top of the paddle. Okay, so that's the ball um, Y, which is 1. And for the top one, it's minus ball size divided by 2. And for the, so that's that one. And for that one, it would obviously be plus ball size divided by 2. So what you want to check overall is if The paddle Y, the top part, is where are we greater than or equal to the middle of the ball. And if the paddle Y is less than or equal to the middle of the ball. And if that is the case, we want it to bounce. But if that's not the case, then we want it to stop. Okay, so we had already commented that out, but we are actually going to put it back in because we do need some parts of it. So if it hits the left gutter, we then want to check whether or not it's actually hit the paddle. So we say if ball one minus half the ball size, Remember that bod mass will allow that division to happen before the subtraction, which is what we want. We're checking if that is greater than or equal to paddle underscore y. And we want to check the other end, which is ball 1 plus half the ball size. And we want to see if that is less than or equal to paddle y. And we need to add on the paddle height here because remember that that is actually the top of the paddle otherwise. So if that is true, we want the ball to change direction. Else, if that is not true, we want the timer to cancel. Okay. Fingers crossed, people. Let's run it. Okay, ball is bouncing. That's a good start. Let's uh, try to hit the ball. Where is it going to end up? Okay, and it stopped, but we did actually hit the paddle. Let's just run that again and see why that is. It might be because the ball is actually so enormous. Um, that the middle of it is kind of a bit of a flat edge. Let's try and miss it and see if it actually stops when it hits the gutter. So it stops when it hits the gutter. Now we want to see if it's stopping properly when it hits the paddle, which a moment ago it didn't look like it. So whenever you code anything, you've got to test it multiple times and figure out exactly what it is that is not working properly. Okay, so I've got to hit it more in the center of the of the paddle. I reckon it's just because that ball is so enormous. It's got such a big flat edge. No, it should be testing for this against that. So maybe I need to add that one and subtract that one. Let's just run that. May have been something so simple, hopefully. Now, for me, that's the way I kind of code a little bit. I, I try to do it as best I can and, and fix all those little quirks by, uh, by going back and 
and changing things. So that bounce seemed to work fine. Uh, so I think I just accidentally restricted the paddle, the active part of the paddle, so to speak. Ooh, ding, ding, ding. Okay, so that one works. Your job now is to implement the right half and then see if you can maybe add in some scoring and have some feedback or make the ball go faster or whatever. Have fun with that. I'm pretty much done with timers and animation now and it's all up to your imagination. Good luck.